Good morning, everyone. That's right. It is Christmas in July, and we're going to kick it off this morning with some ideas for jumpstarting your Christmas preparations, your holiday sewing. Um, I've got a ton of ideas for you. Um, I'm going to focus on one because it features a really cool technique. We are going to create fur using a really cool sulky thread. It's called filane and it's 100% acrylic thread. It has a really, really nice soft feel and texture to it. It's a super heavyweight thread and it's actually going to create the look of fur. So that is what we're gonna focus on today. How to work with this thread, tips and tricks for needles, stabilizers, the embroidery designs you wanna be choosing for this thread, and so on. So drop me a comment, let me know what you're working on, what you are sewing, and what you need help with. We will address some questions as I go along today. So be sure to post your questions that you have for us in the comments. And I do have a great giveaway. So today I'll be giving away a nice assortment of organ needles. If you've never tried organ needles, they're a great sewing machine needle. A lot of sewing machines actually come with organ needles um, with them uh, when you purchase your sewing machine. And so why not replace it with the same machine, or excuse me, with the same needle that came with your machine, right? The cool thing about the organ needles that Sulky carries is that they come in these eco packs. So there's a corrugated cardboard inside. You can see it right there. So it has these little uh, holes that the needles fit into. And what I really like about it is when you're doing a lot of machine embroidery or switching from embroidery to regular sewing throughout a project, or maybe you switch from quilting needles to uh, universal needles, that type of thing. If you do a lot of switching out your needles, which you should because choosing the right needle just makes our sewing that much nicer, more professional, easier to sew, that type of thing. There is a reason that there are all of these sewing machine needles out there. So if you do a lot of switching between needles, uh, this allows you to take a needle out, put it a couple of notches over, and then you'll know that that little needle hanging out over there is the one that you haven't used all the way. So you can go back and reinstall that into your machine and know that that was the needle that you used previously until you've gotten all of your use out of it and can dispose of it properly. So. I really love that part about it because any way that I can organize my sewing room in a more efficient manner <laughs> or a more organized manner, I will take it. So that's my spiel about organ needles. At any rate, one lucky person who likes, comments, shares, otherwise engages with today's post will be eligible to win this great giftie. You're going to get several packs of organ needles in different sizes and different types so that you can try it out on your own. It's a needle pack valued at more than $25. So be sure and engage with the post today and I will be picking a winner sometime tomorrow, maybe the next day. So I like to give everybody a chance to uh, get their comments in before I pick a winner. So. All right, let's get started with our Christmas in July kickoff. So I'm really excited about the design collection I want to show you because I've been working on it for a rather long time. It takes a long time to develop artwork and to get the designs digitized and to test out all of the designs and especially the design I'm going to show you today because it has a lot of stitches. It's a rather large scale design and when you're working with something that has that incorporates two different weights of thread, okay, this design accommodates the 12 weight thread I was speaking about earlier, the filane thread that's very heavyweight, 
And then there's also 40 weight rayon thread in the design as well. So the rayon serves the purpose of giving more detail. So it's the face work, the eyes, that type of thing. And then the heavyweight thread is going to act as our fur, okay? So when you're working with a design that incorporates all these different thread weights and lots and lots of stitches, you really, really want to go through the testing phase quite a bit. And I tested a number of different stabilizers, a number of different fabrics, and of course, lots of different needle types and sizes so that I could be sure to let you guys know what I had the best success with so that you can just replicate that and you don't have to go through all of that testing on your own. So when you're working with a design like that, it takes a lot of development time. So this has been a long time coming and we're actually not even ready to launch the entire collection to you yet, but I thought for Christmas in July, let's give you one of the designs for a limited time so you can try it out. You can grab our brand new Fur Filane thread collection, which is 12 spools of the Sulky Filane thread, all packaged up. I will show you that in a little bit. You can grab up that collection. You can have fun with this chili cat design. Try out the thread, and I know you're going to love it. And the, the effects that it gives you is, is unlike anything um, you have seen before, especially from Sulky. So I think you guys are going to really like it. So I will show you a little bit. Here is our... Peekaboo Pets, right? It's a machine embroidery design called Chili Cat. It's this long hair cat breed with a cute little Santa hat. And this is our freebie during the month of July. So the link is in the description for today's post where you can go and get that Chili Cat design in the format that you need for your embroidery machine. Now, like I said, it features the Sulky Filane 12 weight acrylic thread. And over on this side of the image that you see is that thread collection. And I want to show you it a little bit more in detail so that you could see all the great colors that you get. I have to get a little bit closer in order to see my images that I have for you here today. Uh, let's see. I believe this is the right one. No, it is not. Oh, here we go. So 12 spools of the Sulky Filane thread, and we've packaged this together so that we can give you a really great deal on the thread itself. If you bought all these separately, it would uh, cost quite a bit more. So when you get the whole collection, you get all these different colors. Now, your cat does not need all these colors. If you're following the thread chart uh, as it's written, you only need... Um, I think three or four of these colors, but the cool thing about getting the whole fur collection is one, you're prepared when we launch the entire Peekaboo Pets collection, which is going to have dogs and some other cats, and I'll give you a little sneak peek of that in a minute. But you can also switch around those thread colors and create all kinds of different colored cats for your chili cat design. So you don't have to follow that thread chart you can switch it up. You can create an all gray cat. You can create a cat that's all yellows and tans. You can really take liberties with that and have fun testing it out and seeing what thread colors work with the cat that you want to create. So that's what's fun about the thread collection is that you can mix and match and you can create all different looks of cats. So I'm going to go through... Um, and show you the chili cat up close and personal. Um, but first, I want to talk a little bit more about this filane thread. So I have some samples of it to show you. And you can see, hopefully you can see, it's a very heavyweight thread, okay? So this is the 12 weight thread. And it has a very fuzzy texture already. Can you see that? You could see kind of the the um, fibers uh, coming away from the thread strand itself. So this is what you're going to continue to brush out after you have sewn out the design. And we have a special brush that works perfectly for this. 
we, it's actually called our fillet wire brush. Okay, see that it has fillet right on here. Now, it is a really, really stiff, wiry brush. And once you have sewn out your design, you'll brush, brush, brush as much as you want to get it as fluffy as you want. The more you brush it, the fluffier it's going to get. And you're essentially just kind of separating those fibers a little bit more or blooming those fibers a little bit more to create the look of fur. So let me just show you the difference between a design that is not brushed out and a design that is brushed out. So here we have our chili cat. Isn't she cute? I'm going to enlarge it for you just a little bit. So that's chili cat not brushed. It still looks really cool. So it's definitely your choice if you even want to brush her out. Um, I decided to brush out not only her fur, but also the white parts of the Santa hat. So it would be really fluffy as well. The main part, the red part of the hat is in rayon. And then the eyes, the facial features, the ears, and the whiskers are all also in rayon. So that just helps you, uh, first of all, differentiate between what's brushed and what's not. And also it just gives a little bit more detail work to those facial features. So once you brush it out, you're going to have our furry chili cat. Isn't that cool? So I didn't go all the way with this one as far as brushing it and brushing it and brushing it. But this is the cool effect that you get from this thread. So there's a lot of dimension here. It looks almost 3D. It would be really cool on a stocking. Um, I actually have a link to a free stocking pattern that we have at sulky.com if you want to grab that and try your chili cat on a stocking. It would be a really great pet stocking for your mantle if you happen to have a little kitty of your own or gift it to somebody who does. And um, I just think that would be so cute. So there we have the brushed chili cat and I wanna show it to you really close up. I had, it's, it's hard to get the effect when you are taking a photo straight on. So I came in really, really close and now you can really see the effect of that thread. Isn't that cool? Do you guys love it? Let me know. Give me a thumbs up, a little heart, something like that. Let me know how you guys like our uh, thread effects. I mean, who knew you could create fur like this with thread? It's just so neat. And you can see also you can change up that eye color, of course. You don't have to go with the green that's in the thread chart. If your cat has gray eyes, blue eyes, you can totally just change that up and suit it to your cat or the cat that you want to create. So there we have our close-up chili cat fur. I absolutely love it. Now you might be asking, and I will go through some of the comments, they're coming in fast and furious here. You might be wondering, okay, so how do I sew out this heavyweight thread? Heavyweight thread can be a little bit of a bear, right? We don't want thread breakage. We don't want knots created. Um, your needle has to go through a lot of, of thread and underlay stitches and then whatever fabric you've paired with it, right? So your needle choice is going to be extremely important with this thread. And I have tested just about every needle that I thought would be suitable and I went all the way up to the largest needle uh, that we carry, uh, the largest organ needle, which is a uh, 11018. Um, now that creates almost a too large hole, but if you're doing this on a heavyweight denim um, and something where you need a um, where you have a lot of stabilizer underneath try it with that 11018 because you're going to need to go through, like I said, a lot of areas. At the same time, though, you don't want to create a needle hole that's so large that actually interferes with the rest of the stitch out, okay? 
So you want to make sure that your fabric is going to support this super dense design. And that's where our stabilizer comes in to play as well. But first, let's focus on the needles. Now, I, for most of my stitch outs on the cat, I ended up with a 9014 titanium organ needle. This sucker is super strong. It went through all of the layers. It stitched it out beautifully. I had no problems. I will say you want to slow your machine down considerably. You may even need to slow it down to the lowest setting, which in a design like this that has all these stitches, it's gonna take a long time to stitch out once you've slowed it way down but it's definitely worth not dealing with the headaches that thread breakage can cause. So rather than sitting there uh, and having to re-thread periodically because the speed of your machine is gonna cause too much friction for that thread and it's gonna snap. You want to, and, and let me just tell you, it is a strong thread, so it really takes a lot for it to snap. Um, so using the right needle is imperative. Now, for most other stitches that I, or embroidery designs that I have tested with this thread, a 116 needle worked great. It was my top choice for uh, working with filleting thread there until um, I discovered the 9014 titanium. Now, a 9014 embroidery, I had no success with it. Um, the embroidery needle has a little bit more of a ballpoint than a traditional, or not traditional, but than a titanium or a jeans needle or a top stitch needle. And it just could not pierce through all of those layers of thread uh, as well as these other choices. Now, when you're working with this design with this super high stitch count, you need a fabric, like I said, that's gonna support those stitches. Using a lightweight fabric and putting a bunch of stabilizer with it could work, but I highly recommend just going with a fabric that is a little more heavier weight. So when you're working with this heavier weight fabric like a denim or a canvas or even a linen blend that um, is medium to heavy weight, you need a really good stabilizer that is going to make sure that fabric doesn't go anywhere in the hoop, okay? So what I really had success with is the Sulky Cutaway Plus. There's a link to this in the description for today's video. The Cutaway Plus is a um, permanent cutaway stabilizer. It's going to stay with the fabric throughout its life. It's gonna to continue to support those stitches no matter what happens to the project when you store it away until the next holiday season, it'll be there with it. Um, I recommend something permanent for this application with this design. Now, for the most part, you're going to be using this in a decorative way. I don't really know if you're going to put Chili Cat on a shirt or something like that, um, where it would be washed a gazillion times. Um, at, for the most part, I would see this on a pillow, a stocking, um, something decorative like that. Even the back of a, of a jean jacket uh, would work um, because it's really stable and going to support all those stitches. If you're working with a little bit lighter weight fabric, like I said, some type of linen blend um, or a heavier weight cotton, uh, what I found successful is to first fuse a layer of sulky fuse and stitch. Okay, that is another fusible cutaway. And then add the cutaway plus. Now you've got something super crispy. It's not going to pucker in the hoop. You've got tons of stabilization, but just be mindful that it is going to affect the hand of that fabric. All right, so if you are doing, let's say a pillow with it, it's gonna be tight as a drum pillow, okay? It's gonna have um, a more rigid hand to it. But once you stuff it, and if you don't have any stabilizer on the back of your pillow, it'll still have that 
pillowy, you know, decorative effect. So that is the stabilizer combo that I recommend. Um, and, you know, it's all going to kind of vary when you're working with different types of designs that are digitized for filleting thread. If you have a really open design that doesn't have a lot of fill stitches, you can get away with less stabilizer. You can use a fabric that isn't as heavy weight. Um, we actually had a designer, Katrina Walker, create a really sheer blouse and do machine embroidery with filleting thread on it. And it had this really boho vintage quality to it. And she added thread count to that really sheer fabric by using a sulky Fabrisolvi. And that just washed away after the embroidery was complete, leaving this very sheer quality to the blouse and the stitches were just beautiful. So there are ways you can get away with using a lighter weight fabric, but something like Chili Cat with a lot of underlay stitches, I just, you know, I really think you should just go with a little bit heavier weight fabric so that you have success right out the gate. So speaking of all of those underlay stitches, when you're loading the design into your machine, there are a few considerations you need to take into account. So if you have one of the more top of the line embroidery machines, it's going to uh, automatically trim the stitches sort of at the beginning and at the end of your color sequence before you switch your colors out. It's going to trim and kind of tie off those threads before it moves forward. You want to disable that automatic feature. Okay, so you'll go into your machine settings into the screen. Um, mine pops up before I hit OK for the design to start. It'll ask me, do I want the auto thread cutter? Do I want to color sort? Um, do I want... Uh, it, it asks a number of different questions. You want to disable that function because the more knots and tie-offs, rather, that you have on the underside of your work, the more that needle has to penetrate through all of those layers. And when you have even the smallest little tie off with this heavyweight thread, it's gonna cause problems for the needle. Your needle's gonna struggle to get through all of those little tie off areas. So make sure you disable that. Now, your machine should automatically pause and stop for you so that you can trim your thread tail before you move forward because when you have this auto tie off feature, it will, instead of your thread tail being on top of the work, it brings it down to the bottom. So it'll be on the top of the work, it'll ask you or it'll stop and say, you know, trim thread tail before continuing. That is a really great benefit of having one of these top of the line machines because you don't have to remind yourself to stop, trim that thread tail, and move forward. So if you don't have that functionality, just remember when you have disabled that feature, you will have to cut that little thread tail and then move forward with the design. All right, so uh, let's see. Some people are asking to see the stitch out again. They missed it at the beginning. So let me just pull it up for you. This is what we're talking about today. This is our Chili Cat machine embroidery design, our cute little design with the Santa hat. This is what it looks like when it is not brushed. This is our filleting thread mixed with a little bit of sulky 40 weight rayon. And then here, just a recap, is what it looks like all brushed out. So we have created fur using thread. I mean, it's just so cool. And here is the close up for those of you who missed it. So that is what your thread can look like. And I wanna um, show you a little bit in person or live rather, um, how you actually brush it out, okay? So, and I'll go through a little bit of my samples of my tests so you can see that as well. So. This is an, uh, I'm trying to think. This is just like a heavier weight linen blend fabric, OK? 
okay? It has a little bit of uh, metallic running through it. It's kind of hard to see. So this is my stitched out chili cat. There she is. All right. So you'll take your fillet brush. And like I said, the more you sort of work at it, the fluffier it's going to become. So if you don't want a lot of fur, let's say you want your Santa hat to be fluffier than the cat or vice versa, just work on those areas a little bit more. So I actually brush it all different ways and you do want to be careful. So if you have stitched this out on, let's say a felt or a textured fabric, your wire brush is going to harm the outside fabric. So just kind of pull it away from the area that you're working on and that way you won't accidentally nick your outside fabric. With this linen, it doesn't do anything to it, so I don't have to be as careful, but just keep that in mind as well. So I'm just gonna kind of pull it away just so you can see. And you just go over it back and forth in the direction of the stitches until it starts to bloom up and fluff up. Can you guys see how that's blooming up? This one has already been, been brushed quite a bit. So you'll just keep going, going, going until you get the effect that you want. You can also go, I, I did say in the direction of thread, you can also go against it and kind of go in a little bit of a circular motion. If you really want that thread to bloom up, that really creates a lot, a lot of the, the fuzz look that you're going for. So just keep at it. It's really important that you have a brush like this. I tried it with a toothbrush and it does nothing. So, ooh, speaking of to toothbrush though, when you are doing your stitch out, when you're in the middle of uh, working with the fillet, having a toothbrush on hand is actually a great idea to periodically brush away the little bit of thread lint. Um, lint is probably not the right word, but it's going to, you know, it's a very fuzzy thread. That's the point of it. And so over time, you're going to get a little bit of that on the mechanics of the machine. So just have a little soft toothbrush on hand. And after maybe every two or um, three thread changes, just give it a little bit of a wipe and clear that out of there so you don't get a lot of buildup, <clears throat> excuse me, by the end of the stitch out. So that's another great tip that you wanna have that on hand. All right, so that is kind of how it gets brushed out. And then when you're done fluffing it, just give it one last kind of brush going in the, you know, out from the eyes to really just emphasize. And then you get that nice furry look that extends beyond the perimeter of the design. And I just think that's so cool. Isn't that neat? I hope you guys like it. All right, so I wanted to show you a couple of other samples that I created with Chili Cat as well. And eventually I will be making these samples into some fun projects from here until the holiday season so that I can give you a lot more inspiration of what to do with her. Um, I did want to show you what it looks like when you reduce the design size by 20%. Now, on your machine screen, if you are a machine embroidery enthusiast, you probably already know that on the screen, you can reduce or enlarge a design file by 20% without having to go into software and fiddle with stitch count and density. Your machine should automatically kind of adjust for those things given that 20% above or below uh, ratio. So I wanted to see if I went down 20% and made it a little bit smaller, is that going to work with the fillet or will my stitches be too short? If your stitches are too short, again, you're gonna have a lot more needle penetrations or 
not necessarily a lot more, but a lot tighter um, stitch length. And it, you know, I wanted to see, is that going to cause us problems? So I did have, I want to say one or two times where I had thread breakage. And I do attribute that to the stitches being shorter. Um, but for the most part, it stitched out just fine. So this is Chili Cat reduced 20%. Now, I will say, with those tighter stitches, it made it a little bit harder to get a lot of fluff, okay, because, well, because the stitches were shorter. Now, I really, really had to work at this and go lots of different directions in order to produce that same amount of fur, but it still worked. So... You know, it might be better if you do have software to go into software if you want to do any resizing. But just know you are going to have to test it out. And this, this design takes quite a while to stitch out and it takes up quite a bit of thread. So the great thing is that this fillet comes on these large spools. So you do have a lot to sort of play with. And the whole point of having this large spool rather than a small snap spool is because these fur designs take so much thread to stitch out and we want to make sure that you can stitch more than just one design. So you're getting a lot of thread on these spools and um, yeah, it's, it's just a great deal as well. All right, so speaking of having a lot of color, a lot of color choices in the thread collection, I decided to have a little fun with it and do another test where I swapped out some of the colors to create more of a gray looking cat. So here again I've got some of this metallic linen and I tried to create a little bit more of a grayish cat. So I swapped some of the colors and here you can see what that looks like. Now I actually don't like it as much as the traditional chili cat. I'll bring that um, up so you can see the difference. Um, it just doesn't have the right looking sort of dimension. So I think if I were to do a more gray cat, I would swap out this yellow for a darker gray and that would give me the dimension that I need under the little kitty's chin. So, you know, playing and experimenting with the thread colors is really the only way of, uh, of, of knowing if you're going to get the desired result. So, um, as I roll out more of these peekaboo pets designs, I will give you some more tips and um, different colors to use where so that again, I'm doing that work for you. Um, and again, I'll just show you peekaboo pets machine embroidery cat. Our chili cat is free during the month of July. So grab it up now in the format that you need and get it on your, um, you know, save it to your computer, save it to your thumb drive so that you have it and grab up the uh, fur filet thread collection so that you can mix and match and play around. So I'm going to go ahead before I do my show and tell to give you a sneak peek of what some of the other pet designs look like. I am going to address some of the questions that have come in. So let me scroll back because there's quite a few and I want to make sure that we are addressing them. So lots of people saying hello. I love it. Be sure to say hello, drop a comment or question, like and share this post today and you will be entered to win our great giveaway today, which is an assortment of organ needles valued at more than $25. So you will be sure to be able to not only test the design, or excuse me, the needle that's going to work with your thread and design combination. Um, I'm gonna throw in a pack of titanium needles, which work really great for me with uh, this heavy, heavy stitch count design and heavyweight thread. Also some universals, some machine embroidery assorted needles. And I know once you try these organ needles, you will not want to go back simply because of the great 
storage that you have and the ability to move your needle over in that cardboard and know which needle has been used before. I mean, I just cannot tell you enough how much I love that feature. Plus, they fit on a little pegboard quite nicely in your sewing room. So, okay, let's address some more questions. So, and let me know if, let me know particularly if you have used the filet and how you're liking it so far. We want to give you lots and lots of fun designs to use with this uh, specialty thread. And it's not only good for machine embroidery, it's great for free motion stitching. We have a really great blog post uh, that includes a another free kitty design, and it's done all with free motion and then brushed out. So if you like to do free motion, definitely try out this thread and see the great effects you can achieve with it. It also is great for handwork. Um, our, uh, the, uh, excuse me, the woman who did our intro to cross stitch uh, design or intro to cross stitch video series on YouTube. Her name's Amanda May. She has been testing out the filet for cross stitch and absolutely loves the sort of wooly like thread or wooly like effect that you get with the filet thread. So um, there's just a lot of different applications for it. I'm just focusing on the machine embroidery aspect because we have this great free design right now for our Christmas in July kickoff. So lots of hellos. Hello to you all. Thank you so much for joining me today. My Janome only loves organ needles. <laughs> That's great. Okay. I may have gone back too far. Let's get into some of the questions regarding the thread if we have any today. Lots of hellos. I appreciate that. Yeah, I, it's, it's crazy to think about Christmas already, am I right? But it's bringing me a lot of joy to think about the holidays coming up and the, the, the hopes and dreams I have for us all being able to gather again, gather together again over the holidays and, you know, even if we still have to have small uh, family-only gatherings, we can at least bring some joy and some new decor and some new pretty little things uh, to just bring some happiness into the holidays. So there's really no time like the present to get a jump start on the holiday preparations and, you know, gift giving and... You know, especially if we're going to make some handmade things, we need some time for that. So I think Christmas in July is just kind of a, a genius thing. All right. So I apologize. I, there are so many comments I'm trying to filter through to, looks like my sister's cat. Looking forward to trying it. Oh, I had to have to share that. <laughs> All right. Yeah, uh, I, I kind of struggled with cats versus dogs regarding this thread. So our collection is ultimately going to have a little bit of both. Um, so whether you like cats or you like dogs, there'll be something for everybody. And there's going to be a lot of different um, breeds. We tried to make it a little bit so that you know, swapping out your threads, you could create the dog or cat that you have or that you like the best. So, and there are so many breeds to choose from. It's, it's so hard to narrow it down, but I do think that starting off with the six designs that we will ultimately have in this collection, that will just be a springboard for creating lots more. So you definitely let us know how you guys are enjoying it and the dogs and cats that you want to see made out of this thread so that we can make everyone happy or at least try to. So, so Julie's asking, is it similar to Burmalana? Yes, it is. So it, oh, I wanted to say that too. When you're looking for designs to use with filet, you need to be sure that your design is digitized 
for heavyweight thread. It might be labeled as fur or brushed or just simply heavy. You need to be sure that your design is digitized for 12 weight. It may have a combination of 12 weight and 40 weight, just like Chili Cat does. And so you need to also be sure to print out or have available on your screen your color chart. Because if you're going through, maybe you're not paying attention to the type of thread and only looking at the color when you're swapping thread colors, you need to be sure that you have that correct type of thread in the machine because if it's digitized for 40 weight, the fillet is not going to work. It's going to um, be too close together, your stitches, and too dense, and the fillet is just, your needle's going to just try to sew over and over and over those areas. You'll have way too dense of an area, it'll bunch up, and you'll have lots of problems. I want to mention too, I paired my fillet with traditional 60 weight sulky bobbin thread. Okay, you can see it on the back here. Some of the fillet, you know, gets pulled to the wrong side, but not very much. And it is with just the traditional sulky bobbin thread. Okay. I have wanted to try this thread. Now is a great time. If you grab up that thread collection, you're getting a great, great deal, and you'll have all kinds of different colors that you can mix and match, um, like I said, to create lots of different colors and types of thread. So, yeah. And yes, you can also use it in your serger. We have a great blog post about using filane in, your, in the loopers of your serger to make really neat thread effects. And if you're making a blanket where, let's say it's out of fleece, and your edges are just a nice surged edge, that filane is going to give you that same furry, fuzzy, nice feeling edge as you're getting with the blanket. So that's a really great use for it as well. Okay, lots of people saying they love the effect. It, it's so neat. So, and also, Birdie, thank you for asking, when will the whole collection come out? <laughs> I'm really hoping by the end of the year we can bring you the rest of the designs and I will show you some of them right now. Should I show you or is it just going to make you upset that you can't get it now? Let me know because um, I really want to share the sneak peek with you but I know how frustrating that is when you see it and you can't get it. Um, but I really just, I'm so proud of it and I wanted to show you. And these are just my, my uh, test stitch outs right now. Um, but, so, the, I showed you the back of this guy before. This is the front. And I call these guys peekaboo pets because they kind of peek out over something, right? So you could put this guy on the top of a pocket or stocking or something, and he's kind of peeking out. So that's why they're called peekaboo pets. So this is a little cutie. You could see the great fur effect. And I just stitched this on a little rectangle of felt. Uh, felt works really good and is really stable for these designs. And I've got a piece of that cutaway plus behind my felt. And again, I used the Organ Needles Titanium size 9014. And the cool thing about using this 9014 titanium is I didn't have to switch my needle when I went to the 40 weight thread. So if you're using a 116, like this jeans needle, a jeans or a top stitch, 116 works great. Um, if you're using this, you will need to switch out your needle when you switch to the 40 weight thread. So keep that in mind. You don't want too large of an opening for your thread um, on the needle. So there, it just gives it too much room to kind of move around when you're doing the embroidery at such a high speed. So you will need to swap your needle out for the 40 weight. But when I used the 9014 titanium, I was able to keep the same needle in for the 40 weight rayon and the 12 weight. And it worked great. So, all right. So this is one of my other favorite designs of the collection. 
Um, I really, really love Chili Cat and this is Cool Cat, okay? I mean, do you love him? He has kind of a little beard and I mean, the sunglasses are just awesome. So of course you can change the color of sunglasses. Um, there's a lot of fun you can have with this guy. I haven't brushed him out all the way. I really just was like focusing on his little bearded area and you can do that as well. You can just focus on the little tuft kind of above the sunglasses and brush him out. But oh my gosh, I love Cool Cat. I mean, it's really a toss up. I, I, I love them all. I have, I have love for them all. So I cannot show you any of the dogs yet because I have not sewn them out and they are still in a little bit of testing phase. Um, but the cats, love them. I'll show you my chili cat again if you missed my stitch out of chili cat at the beginning of our episode today. But here's my chili cat. I mean, they're just so cute. They're just so cute. All right. <laughs> Sheila has a great comment. Thank you, Sheila. Let's change the sunglasses to a mask and make him totally current. <laughs> great idea. I didn't create a pet with a mask because these guys were, were uh, concepted so long ago before any of our social distancing. Um, so yeah, Cool Cat Rocks, thank you. I love Cool Cat. I think you guys will love it too. So let me know what you plan to make with Chili Cat because a lot of people have downloaded that little guy or gal. And I would love to know what you are planning to make with Chili Cat. And um, a lot of people have had some questions about the needles to use. I did go into that um, at length during this episode, but I also want to, I'll just show you close up in case it was difficult to see. I had great, great success with the 9014 titanium needles. And then also, uh, there's a 116 titanium needle. And if you're working with super heavyweight fabric, like a heavyweight denim, like you want to put this on a jean jacket or peeking out from a pocket of a jacket, like I mentioned earlier, go with that 116 needle because it's really going to give you the strength and the right size needle hole for a uh, that heavyweight thread to pass through easily, okay? And also, I wanted to mention, on our website, when you go to the Organ Needles page, and I have linked to it in the description of this post, there is a wonderful printable resource there in the description of the needles. It is how to choose the best needle for your sewing. This is a wonderful resource that you can print out hang in your sewing room or put next to your machine, put it with your machine manual. And it's a great reference for you to look at and say, okay, is a universal needle going to work for this? When do I use a quilting needle? Is it for piecing or just quilting? Um, what type of jersey needle do I need? A super stretch or a jersey? Um, and so forth. And it gives you a little bit of information about what sort of the anatomy of that needle okay so that you can understand it a little bit better so if you're still having questions or unsure which needle to use you can refer to this printable at sulky.com you can also email us at any time at info at sulky.com and we can get back to you with a ton of information and what has worked for us and what has been successful with all of our trial and error as well. So a lot of the times it's, it's bizarre, but an embroidery needle may not be your best choice for machine embroidery, depending on your fabric and depending on your, uh, the design that you've chosen, which just really adds to the confusion, doesn't it? Uh, so it's really, really great for you to be able to reference our Sulky blog as well, because there are tons of of great posts about 
you know, I tried this needle, I tried this needle, here's what worked, okay? So definitely let us do the legwork for you and you can sit back, have a cup of coffee and read through so that um, you can start off with a great choice rather than doing all of that trial error on your own. So thank you, Brenda. Yes, print that needle page. You may as well. It is definitely a great resource. Oh, and Patricia is reiterating what I said earlier in the episode. Thank you so much. Definitely slow your machine down to the slowest speed when you're working with this fillet. The faster it goes, the uh, more friction is put on the thread and uh, you could have some breakage. So you definitely want to go slow with this and just know it's going to take a while to stitch out. So again, grab a cup of coffee, get yourself a snack and uh, watch your machine go. It's, you know, it's, it's better than watching all that TV that um, we're probably getting sick of right now with all of this sheltering in place. So love this chart. Thank you so much. Oh, and Vicki is letting us know on the Sulky website, she searched for Filane, clicked on a thread color. There are several tabs in the description area that are very helpful. How to use, how to care for, washing instructions, ideas for use, etc. Yes, we have put a lot, a lot of time and effort into making sure that you all will have success with this thread. So make sure to review all of those resources that are available to you. We really, really want you to love and, and um, have great results. So uh, make sure you take advantage of all of those things that are available to you. So again, I just want to go over Chili Cat Not Brushed, Chili Cat Brushed. So the fun, fun thing about this thread is that you can brush it out and create fur. But again, look at how neat it is even when it's not brushed out. It still has this great fluffy look to it. It still looks a lot like thread. It's still very pronounced uh, because of that heavy weight. So either way, I think you're really going to enjoy it. And again, there is a link to a free stocking pattern in the description of today's post. If you wanna try it out and make a pet stocking, you can also make a really cute, fun pillow or some other home decor accents. And up until the holidays, I'll give you lots more Christmas in July projects to make. Um, next week on So What, I am going to share with you something else that is just a really great project idea. How's that for a sneak peek? Maybe that was a little uh, too ambiguous, but I think you guys are really going to enjoy it. So thank you for joining me today. Another thing I wanted to mention is we have got a great bag boutique right now. We just launched it this morning. Um, this would look really great on a bag or backpack, something to put your pet treats in, that type of thing. So check out our bag boutique. There's a link to the um, page in the description of today's post and you can access a lot of different patterns and that type of thing for your bag making. So um, again, thank you so much for join, joining me today and uh, let's get started on Christmas and holiday sewing together. So join me for the rest of July where we will have great patterns on the blog, more tips and tricks and techniques, and of course, our So What every Tuesday here on Facebook. So let's get into the spirit together and uh, have some fun leading up to Christmas. Thanks, everybody. Have a wonderful day.